have to nail this. Mm, okay, there we go. Now we are cooking. Come on, Mr. Rice. Elimination is on the line. And this rice will not cook. I've never had rice do this before. I can't go home just because of uncooked rice. All right, everyone, just over three minutes, yes? Come on, Mr. Rice. Man, come on. Minutes left. Let's go, Chef Ramsay. Start thinking about your plating, everybody. Oh, and Mr. Rice, come on. I'm never cooking rice again. Let's go, Chef Ramsay. We want to see Master Chef level food here. And as elegant as possible. He's kissing the oven. Man. Oh, thank gosh. Perfect. There you go, Noah. Pick your best one. Last minute, 60 Woo! seconds. Come on, come on, Chef Ramsay. No excuses. Let's go, Suba. You can do it, mijo. Doesn't matter what you cook, just matter what gets on the plate. 15 seconds. I mean, he is waiting to the last Man. possible second. Come Let's on. Let's go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hands up. Kitchen up. Hands in the air. Come Good on. Job, Seriously, chef. well done. <laughs> I feel great about that. Man, that was tight. Pastry could have been a little bit thicker, but I was up against it time-wise. Fingers crossed. This is the best lemon chicken pot pie ever in 30 minutes. I had a little bit of a panic there with that first salmon, but I grabbed a new piece, and it turned out beautifully. Now it is time to see what magic you could create in one pot in one hour. The first cook, whose dish we'd like to take a closer look at, actually only had 30 minutes. Come on up here with your dish. Yes, chef. Yes. Yes. Oh, man. Ooh. I made a delicious lemon-scented chicken pot pie. 30 minutes? Like, he's such a show-off. He put leaves on his pie. Man. It kind of looks perfect. <laughs> wow. Ooh. Give it a try, guys. It's really good. I mean, this is unreal. Aside from the fact that it's very, very good, I'm actually a little bit surprised at how you were able to do that in that short of time. But it feels like really it's been cooking for three hours. Right. Good job. Right. Thank you. Bravo. Take your apron off. Let's get to some serious matters. <laughs> that cast iron was a, a tough challenge Juicy. because 60 minutes sounds a long time, but you can't fast track a beautiful slow cook. So. I'm going to take my hats off to all of you. Give yourselves a round of applause. Seriously. We need to taste all your dishes and decide who's going home. First up, let's start off with Bree. Okay. I'm excited. The salmon looks beautiful. The skin is crispy. So I'm feeling good about my dish. I have a crispy salmon with a corn puree, candied bacon, roasted baby carrots, and I pickled some shallots on top. I could see a little bit of uh, jeopardy. What happened? The skin stuck the first time, but I'd start it over, and I'm glad I did. Be confident it's cooked inside? I am. Shall we? Breathe the salmon's raw. Oh, shoot. Oh, it's completely raw. <sighs> um. Okay. The actual puree is delicious. Thank you. The bizarre thing on here are the carrots. Listen to this. The puree was delicious. What I'm missing on this plate, honestly, the, the cast iron challenge itself. I want to see more char. I want to sure. see the carrots themselves get this nice yeah. blackening. OK. Thanks, Brie. Thank you. This isn't just an immunity challenge. Someone is going home. And if your protein is raw, it's pretty much an automatic out. The next dish we would like to taste further would be from Miss Sarah. Let's go, Sarah. Sarah, please describe your dish. So I have a uh, medium rare filet mignon with sauteed broccolini, a fondant sweet potato with cabernet pan sauce. 
you're making meat, potatoes, and veg, which at this point, I think we were looking for more sophistication. So for me, it's all about that sauce. So you want a medium rare in here? Yes. And that, it is. Ooh, very, very nice. nice. Man, that is beautiful. Very nice. It is kind of perfect in its simplicity. The broccolini are both acidulated and flavorful at the same time. The pan sauce is rich and good. You nailed it. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm considering you had one vessel to cook everything, and I can taste so many different techniques and so many different layers of flavor. I, I love everything about it. Yeah, I agree. And I love the choice of sweet potato. I thought that was really smart because everything else in this plate is very salty. I think the sweet really ties everything together. It was beautiful. Thank you so much. Well done. Great job, sir. Making steak and potatoes was definitely risky, but they all loved it. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be up on that balcony soon. OK, Mr. Suba. All right, let's go, Suba. Ooh la la. Um, today, we have a shrimp biryani and a apple cucumber saffron date salad. Suba, I think this is one of your best plating. Thank you, chef. So when did you fold in the shrimp? At what point? Uh, just before I put it in the oven for about 15 minutes. It's delicious. OK, you have this incredible DNA of flavor profile that lights up this kitchen every time. So that's what kind of power you deliver. Coming from you, I'm very humble. Thank you very much. I agree. I love the addition of the textural plays with the cashews and that shallot mix. You should bag that, bottle that, whatever. It is so delicious. Thank you. I think my comment is as much for the rest of the eight of you left that Suba is one to watch right now. Thank you, Suba. Good job. Great job, Suba. Uh, really good. Everyone thinks that, you know, I am the Willy Wonka of MasterChef season 10. But I'm as good as anyone else is out here. And today, I proved it. Next up, Noah, please. Let's go. Looking down at my dish, I did exactly what I wanted to do. I mean, I'm feeling really good. Oh, boy. No, describe the dish, please. All right, so what we have today is a Chinese frittata. It's on top of a fermented and anchovy black bean paste. And then around the rim is a vinegar, broccoli rub, yogurt sauce. This plating is kind of horrendous. Um, that wouldn't be served in any restaurant anywhere. This plating is kind of horrendous. That wouldn't be served in any restaurant anywhere. What's the protein? Pork. Two ways. It's in the sauce, and I put it into the frittata. I respect the Chinese culture, but you just need to be careful because a little knowledge is dangerous. It's a bizarre combination between the spice and the kick and the sourness. And then you've got the dense pork in the middle. The unappetizing aesthetic is matched in the flavor. It's unsophisticated. It's unevolved. The sauces are out of balance with the protein. I think the only way that this could potentially be saved is if you put this in a tortilla, to be honest. Yeah, make a taco. Yeah, because you have like the bean mixture, you have eggs, and you have a red-based chili sauce. Tonight, somebody's going home. And unfortunately, you've got one foot out the door because the dish doesn't make sense. I said the challenge was hard enough, but you screwed it up even more by being silly with a Chinese frittata. Thank you, Noah. Damn, he's got so much more to him than that. I'm embarrassed beyond my wildest dreams. I feel like I disrespected my girlfriend's family. I feel like a complete idiot. All right, Miss Dorian. Bring a little flavor of the South down here, please. I'm not happy with my dish. I'm still not sure if the rice is done. And anything right now can send you home. Ms. Dorian, please describe your dish. This is my smothered herb peach chicken with rice. I love the char on the outside and the roasting of the skin and all that. I'm concerned about the cooking of the rice, to be very honest. I see the white little specks in the middle of those granules, and it's concerning me. Right. Should we taste? No. Uh, sadly, the rice is undercooked a little bit, but 
It tastes fantastic. It's exotic. I love the vanilla. I love all the different spices. Thank you. It's interesting, like you said. It's sweet. I love the taste of the vanilla. But I expect certain things from you, Dorian. It's not true Dorian standard. What I'm missing in this dish is the textural play. Like, I want the chicken, like, breaded in cornmeal, or I want something to give that a star standout quality in a way that feels really authentic, but elevated. Yeah, it's one of the flattest dishes that you've done. OK. Thank you. Thank you. I think this just goes to show that the cast iron skillet was harder than I think 100%. anyone Absolutely. thought it would be. Yes. OK, next, Nick. I thought I should show something that I grew up making. So I made for you a clam chowder. Even though I know I like to usually go with those kind of inventive creations. I like the color contrast. I like how smooth and creamy the soup looks, but with those little textural pops on top with the clam shells. I love it. This is my favorite plating of the night, actually. Thank you. That is as good tasting as it is looking, then uh, yeah, we're in for a treat. Let's taste it. Delicious. Thank you. Tastes like a beautiful New England clam chowder. I think that the layers of flavor in here are amazing. The clam flavor comes through really nicely. The worst is when it just tastes like a pile of cream. This tastes like seafood. A little bit too thick for me. I think you went a little bit too heavy under the flour. But a smart utilization of that cast iron pan. You know your way around clams, kid. Nice chowder. It's great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good job, man. Good job. Really profound. <laughs> it's great. Next up, Sherry, please, let's go. I'm so excited for Daphne to taste this curry. And I think she's going to be really happy with my dish. This is something that if you came to my house, you might eat this. Sherry, describe the dish, please. I have an Indian-style chole, which is like a chickpea curry, a drier version, with garlic naan. Visually, it is good. And how do you cook chickpea in 60 minutes? I'm very experienced. <laughs> <laughs> this is like a Tuesday night dinner at my house. The naan is delicious. It's cooked all the way through. I think the fresh herb on top is beautiful. But I want a little yogurt, something to cool it a little bit. That's the only thing that this dish is missing. Okay. So this is Tuesday night. What happens on Wednesday night? Brianni. Because I'm coming Tuesday, and I'm staying Wednesday, too. <laughs> Thursday, Friday, uh, Joe? Thursday, Friday, I'm going back to New York because I oh. can't stay in Minnesota more than a day and a half. <laughs> Thank you, Sherry. Thank you. <laughs> so nice to meet you. <laughs> Next, we'd like to try uh, Micah's dish. Come on down. OK, Micah, what did you make for us? A pepper-crusted filet mignon sautéed fingerling potatoes with braised kale and cipollini mushrooms with a bourbon shallot sauce. Steak and potatoes. I don't mind a classic presentation, but I think you should have been thinking about the color play. Potatoes plus steak plus kind of muted brown feels one-dimensional to me. What temp have you gone for in the filet? Medium rare, chef. Right. It's definitely rare. Yeah. It's kind of burnt on the outside. Mm -hmm. All that pepper is burnt. That sauce came together really nicely. However, I'm just not getting like the rich, fatty feeling of beautifully charred, salty, sizzled steak that you have the opportunity to get in a cast iron skillet. Thank you. I've got this ragged, overcooked beef on the outside and slightly dense and unseasoned on the inside. I've seen you cook better, way better. This dish, for me, it's a series of missteps and mistakes. Thank you. I let myself down. I thought that my dish was going to speak for itself, but in all honesty, there was nothing being said by it. So I could be going home tonight, and that's a very upsetting thought. That was a tough challenge this evening. We now need a moment to discuss these dishes. I believe that this is the first big mistake that I've made in this competition. I know his dishes at this point. It's not cutting the mustard. But for me to get sent home right now would be devastating. Micah, the 
dish was wrong. That was terrible. It was terrible. Freeze dish. Nothing. Nothing nailed it for me on that dish. It's a brutal night. You ready? Yeah. Indeed. Good. Let's go. We're down to the last eight, and sadly tonight, for one of you, you've cooked for the very last time inside this incredible kitchen. But well, on better news, one of you is going to have the recipe featured on the Family Circle website. And that dish was cooked by Suba. For tonight's winning recipe, you can visit FamilyCircle.com. Oh, thank you, sir. Suba, your dish, it told a beautiful story. In Spanish, the word suba means to go up. Subir. So why don't you subir up to the balcony, my friend, okay? Thank you. Good job. Great job, Suba. Good job. I am amazed. This is the kind of news I want to tell my wife. She's going to be so proud of me. I'm in cloud nine. Young man, you've now put shrimp biryani on the map. Shrimp biryani in one pot. <laughs> Okay, guys, we were also impressed by three more home cooks tonight. Sarah, Nick, Sherry. The dishes were thoughtful and also very good. Dorian, tonight was not your best performance, but it was certainly enough to keep you from going home. Please, go to the balcony and put on your white aprons. Well done. Congratulations. To be in the top seven, it feels amazing. But it was way too close for me. So under no circumstances am I going to get comfortable because I'm here to win. I'm a fighter. At this stage of the competition, we expected more from all three of you. This challenge was all about utilizing the cast iron pan. Brie, the dish was lackluster. And it didn't strike us that you maximized that input from that cast iron pan. Noah, tonight, that little knowledge from China confused you because you didn't play to your strengths. You had no control. Micah, I'm not saying that you took it lightly, but you took a big risk just cooking a filet. It needed to be elevated, and honestly, it wasn't even cooked properly. Based on the dish alone, the home cook that is going home tonight is... This is a shock for us. Brie. Noah and Micah head upstairs. I'm definitely treading on thin ice tonight. And I just wasn't the worst, and that's why I'm here. Moving forward, I have to really step it up because I definitely could have gone home tonight. Oh, Brie. You left us with no option this evening because the salmon was raw. Your plating is incredible. And one thing that is definitely confirmed, you have a future in food. Thank Come you. On. I can promise you that I won't stop cooking, and um, I've learned a lot. Awesome. Awesome. Come and say goodbye, young lady. It's really hard to walk away right now, but I really had some high points throughout this journey. Congratulations. Blue team! Oh! <laughs> You dress food beautifully. Thank you know, it's like your hair. There's not a hair out of place. <laughs> With that being said, this competition is definitely the hardest thing I've ever done. The dessert, for me, is an insult to France. But I think I've shown enough of my strengths as the best plater of the competition. The whole thing screams of umami. Very satisfying. Thank you so much. And I think I'm more ready now to go into that culinary world. And I think it's really just the beginning. Hi, Bree. Bye, Bye, guys. Yeah. Now, you, talented seven, you need to keep fighting so you don't go home before your time. Get some sleep. Good night. Night, chefs. Night, Joe. Night, Dad.